Hi everybody. Um, I hope you can see me and hear me okay. I'm Karen from Karen Davis Sugarcraft. My husband Barry is doing the filming, so <laughs> he is going to read out any questions you have as we go along. Please talk to us, ask as many questions as you want. If I don't get to answer them all in this 45 minutes, I will go back on later and answer, try and answer anything you want to know. Okay, so today, I don't know whether you saw the little preview um, on Thursday. Today I'm going to make a knitted teddy bear. So it's a modelled figure, but I'm using our knitted mould to cover the teddy bear. So it looks like a knitted toy. Um, this, the cakes are in view, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the cakes. So we will go in, in closer later when Barry moves the camera over. This was the first cake I did with these knitted toys on. This was in Cake Masters magazine. I think it was back last February. And we were saying the other day, the rabbit did used to have legs, but he's travelled far and wide in a very bumpy van to um, all the cake exhibitions. So he lost his legs, but they, it, we think he looks like his legs are in the basket. So uh, hopefully you do too. So I'll see how the time is at the end to see about, you know, giving you a bit more of a description about how to make each figure, because depending on how how quick it is to do the teddy bear, you might have, you know, short on time or might have extra time. So this is the little teddy bear here that I'm actually going to make today for you. Okay. Um, but both cakes are, are on toy baskets <laughs> with the uh, basket weave. So let's get started. Okay, so don't forget any questions, please, please ask. Okay, I'm going to start with the legs for the bear. And what you've got to bear in mind is that you're going to cover the legs with more paste. So don't do them too big. Whatever part you're doing, you have to sort of think a bit smaller than you would normally. Okay, and this is our knitted mould. If you haven't got this, you might have someone else's knitted mould or some other, other sort of texture mould that you could use or you could model a bear and snip it with curved scissors, whatever, you know, the, the instructions are basically the same. Um, Laura's big, um, class before this was really good, wasn't it, with the hippo, so she's a hard act to follow, but um, this is completely different really. So this is our own sugar paste that I use, we get this made for us, but if you haven't got this, you can use any other sugar paste fondant, but you need to add in Tylose CMC powder to it, and it's approximately a 5ml level teaspoon to 225 grams or 8 ounces of paste. You just put your, your powder on the table and just knead it into your paste, um, and you can use it straight away, it should work straight away in the moulds. But when, if you leave it any, any longer, it does firm up further. So bear that in mind. Okay. Now, I don't need that at the moment. So I got carried away then talking and just modelled, <laughs> shaped the leg. So we'll just start with a ball. Okay. That's, I usually describe um, a ball or a sausage of paste as some sort of sweet or chocolate. <laughs> so I don't know. You'll be watching, there might be people from, you know, different places around the world. Um, you know, I usually call these like a Malteser or a Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> so I'm trying to think what that, what that one is. I think it's smaller, slightly smaller than a Ferrero Rocher. That's like what we call a bonbon, you know, the toffees with the like, powdered sugar on the outside. So that's a, or a very small cherry tomato, maybe. <laughs> Barry's pulling a face, what's wrong? <laughs> Don't you like my description? <laughs> so from that ball, I've just shaped a long, like a long thin teardrop. Please remember to share this live. Oh, oh. no. Sorry. <laughs> right, so then I'm going to just bend up there for the, the foot, okay. So whatever you model, you know, obviously always start with the same size piece of paste. So I'll do that one as well now. Is it close enough to see? Yeah, I was going to say, you can ask them if they want, they can share this with the friends. So oh, they can, yes. They can share yeah, the yeah. Video. If you've got any friends you think would like to see this, please do share it. Well, that's um, okay. Yeah. So it's it's funny, This these cakes, though, when we are out at the shows with them and I sit demonstrating how to use our moulds, people always want to see how to use the figures. So I think hopefully this video will be quite popular um, for anybody who's already asked me to see how to make these little figures. So there again, just push, Hi, push the foot up. Okay. So we've got two feet 
legs all in one. You could do the feet separately if you wanted to. So you see they look quite thin for a teddy bear's leg, don't do, they? Do really? I need to come closer? Yeah, you, you, you probably do now, and maybe at more of an angle. We're not that very, you know, we're not very um, up to date with all these using different screens and things, are we? We need a bit of training, I think. Okay, right, the knitted mould. So I'll get some brown paste out now to cover his legs. Okay, let's put them to one side. So I'm going to just dust the mould with corn flour. I always use corn flour because it's dry. I've seen a lot of people like brushing Trex, white, you know, white vegetable fat, Crisco into, into moulds. But I tend to, when, when the paste comes out of the mould, if you want to paint it or dust it, you've then got to wait for that fat to dry. But with corn flour, everything works straight away. Now I'm going to roll the paste into here. And when you use a mould this sort of shape or size, you don't want to just put that in and roll it. You start to roll it first to make it easy for yourself, okay? And you can see my paste is quite firm, not sticky, because that's sometimes what people get wrong, how, you know, what paste they put in into their mould that might give them problems. But like I said before, the best way, I think, is just fondant or sugar paste. Can it's, we zoom in? Pardon? People want me to zoom in. Zoom in closer, <laughs> come closer. <laughs> Okay, so just start to roll that out a little bit. Now looking, looking at these, the legs and the size, I want to hopefully get two, two legs out of the one piece of paste. And when I roll into the mould, because the pattern is this way, that's the way I'm going to roll, okay? If it was the basket weave, as on the cakes, the pattern is going that way, so I would roll across that way. It just works better. It gives you a better impression. Okay, so I've started to roll out. Now, you see the size also of my rolling pin? Whoops. It is smaller, it's narrower than the mould. If I use one, I've got one somewhere, a bigger one, I can't see it. But if it goes across like this, then you, you, your paste is only going to, um, it's not going to be thin enough to wrap around the figures, it'd be too thick. This, as it is, is more for putting straight onto a cake to do the side. We use a lot of our like basket weave as the side covering the knitted moulds, the basket weave, the wicker. We just roll straight in with a bigger pin and then trim it off. And that is the side covering of your cake. But for this, for this, work, this reason, I want to use the smaller pin so I can get the paste thin to wrap around. Okay, so it doesn't matter that it goes over the edge there. I'm going to push it down there as well. Because when you take it out, if you if you sort of cut it and there's a bit missing off those corners that you do need, it's very annoying. Right, so that's ready to roll in now. So press very hard and firmly and turn over. Okay, and there's your knitted paste. Now, I know that's plenty big enough to wrap around the feet. So that was quite hard for me actually rolling over there. I don't think I've pressed hard enough. I should have been doing it more here. So the pattern isn't as good as it should be there um, because I, I didn't put enough pressure because we're stretching over. So now how much do I need to cut? I'm going to trim it about there. Okay, take those ends off because we won't want those at all. And I think I'll just cut that in half anyway to do one one leg at a time okay so there's several different ways of covering the different parts of the animals or the toys bodies it depends what you're what you're covering really um now this you could either do you can wrap it around the leg and then put a separate color on for the foot but i'm going to do this one all in one in one go now that is lots of paste okay it's actually going to fold over the end of the foot and then come back and i'm going to trim it round here okay so i know if i just mark it here and here that's plenty to wrap around okay and i'll mark it there as well this foot take that away and then I'm just going to trim those pieces off. It will be trimmed again, obviously. I know it's far too big. 
So now I've got some glue, edible glue, and this is glue made with Tylo powder, CMC powder. It's about one part powder to 30 parts of water, which on these little tiny bottles, I'm not sure of the exact measurement, I can't remember if that's well, how many mils it is. 25 mils. I don't know. I just think, yeah, <laughs> I can't remember. I used to know. Um, it's just literally a scoop on the end of a teaspoon handle into the pot and then fill it with water and leave it overnight. So I'm just going to put some glue on the end of his foot there. Okay, you want it very thin, not wet, not too wet and slippy. And then I'm going to put the paste just tucked under his foot slightly, fold it over. I'll turn it round now so you can see better. And then I'll put a little bit more glue down here and over. Okay, now here at the side where there's too much paste, I'm going to pinch that tightly together like that, okay? Now, somewhere I've got little scissors, here we are. So now we pick that up and trim away. I've just got to yeah, see where his foot is. And the same there, trim that away. Okay, and then turn it over. And we'll have a little bit of glue down each side. Close that over like that. So he's got square toes at the moment, not a good teddy bear look. So we can snip those off. Now, the, the tool you must have for doing this is a Dresden tool. Now you see where the, the joins are there. All you do is push the joins together with your Dresden tool. If you're very, very good, you can actually follow the knitted pattern, but it's it's not that um, visible. Whatever you do, it just seems to work. Just push like that. Try not to push edges, even you know if, the, if you've cut and you've left a little gap, try never to push it with your finger because you will lose the pattern. Okay, so you that's one Just more stay in the middle. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Working my way off oh, stage. Yeah. I can't keep up with you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh dear. Right, okay, so same again here. I didn't trim this first, did I? Let's put the little foot on. So if I know it's going to wrap around here. There's all different ways you can do this, really. It's funny, when you make things like this, you, your ideas and your method develops and changes as you make them. As, as you go along, you know, you'll do something one way and then... A year later, you change and do it. I think, why didn't I think of that before, you know? Or you see somebody else doing something that you've made and they, they do it better than you, <laughs> have better ideas. <laughs> so a little bit of glue on the leg, across, take the paste over, squeeze the sides together. Okay, and then trim off again. And trim. Oh, I'll just fold that round with a little bit of glue. So nobody is going to see here, are they? So don't worry about the back. Then trim off again, trim off the square toes. Make sure it's close together. And like Laura, I did, I, I was sort of half listening to Laura and half watching as I was setting up here and getting ready. And she said about cool hands, and that is so important doing this because if your hands are hot, this paste is going to get softer and softer. So, you know, as you do this, you're going to um, soften the paste and lose the pattern. There we go, push the edges together. What colour um, did he use on the paste? This is Sugar Flare Dark Brown, but I've just used a little bit to get a nice light brown teddy bear colour. Okay, there's two feet and thankfully they're pretty much the same size. Okay, <laughs> right, so now, uh, what is it? Next, the body before we put the skirt on. Now I'm actually going to sit the legs on top of this covered cake dummy because I'm going to make the put her up here for now. Um, when you make figures like this, it's really important what you use as a support inside the bear. Um, there's so many different things you can do. Some people use like plastic dowels. Some people use spaghetti. What else is there? I sometimes make these little sticks out of flour paste. 
These are great, so the whole thing is edible. But once you put these into your figure, they do soften up again. So you've got to sort of let the stages dry, but it just gives you that little bit of extra support when the figure is drying and you're not worrying about a child biting into it, you know. Um, which I always think, I can't imagine any mother just handing the child <laughs> the teddy and saying, you know, they can eat it. Especially not at the moment when the children are all inside, you know, they'd have a very big sugar sugar hit. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to use a wooden skewer, like a satay stick, because what I actually do is, I'm just going to push that in now, we don't need it that big, so somewhere I did have wire cutters and I can't see them, oh dear, right, I'm just going to try and cut that and snap it. Yeah, I did get the wire cutters out before, like flower wire cutters, but I can't see them. They might turn up in a minute behind something. Um, what I'm actually going to do is just build a figure around this. And if you do that, but don't use any glue on the stick, just glue your figure together. In a few days time, you can actually lift your figure off that. I've done that many a time when I've sort of swapped over cakes or whatever. So the legs here, you wouldn't glue them down onto <clears throat> onto the, the cake. The dummy, sorry, is it's ideal for this. Just put some icing on the top of your dummy so the bear isn't in contact with the, uh, the polystyrene. Okay, so you can leave those loose and then there's gonna be glue on here to um, attach. Now, this is underneath her skirt, so I don't want too much paste. I'm just gonna make a little piece like this to go underneath and give her a little bit of a body. So we'll just put a little bit of glue up there. You don't need much. Pop that round. And that will help her skirt. Okay, support her little skirt. So is everything okay so far? I hope you're all keeping well and staying safe. Um, and I think it's great what Paul and David are doing. I felt quite honored to be asked to do this. Um, I think that, you know, you see the demonstrations and the, the different uh, cake artists all doing beautiful things and David, um, David and Paul are like the swan, you know, with the legs going underneath, so everything out in the background and, you know, we don't see all that, but they're working so hard. Oh, right, I'm talking, I'm forgetting what I'm doing. Where's the, yeah, the mould? There's the Lottie. This is our Lottie lace mould, but lots of you will have different moulds anyway. Um, Someone just asking what the mould, she's a beginner, wants to know what the knitted piece is called. Um, the knitted piece, what yeah. the, the knitted piece is the knitted piece mould. <laughs> yeah, that's that one. Right, I've actually got some lace ready. I can't even see. I've tidied up too well. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I couldn't see my blue paste. Okay, so this is some... I decided to do the ballerina in blue. I thought she'd look nice in pale blue. This is sugar flare baby blue. So again, with your mould, some cornflour in. Tap it out so there's not too much. Now this is a long, thin mould. So I want to put in a long, thin piece of paste. So I'll roll the sausage, flatten it out a little bit, and pop it onto the mould. Now, they, they do release the paste very easily, these moulds. So always make sure you've got a little corn flour. If you have hot hands, look corn flour on your fingers and start to press in. And when I'm pressing, some people like to roll, but I think with this, with the shape, I think it's easier to do with your fingers. When you're pressing in, make sure you're keeping it level with the back of the mould and it's not going over the edge anywhere. If it goes over the edge when it comes out, you then have little, you know, little pieces that you don't really want. So we we'll just press that in. Okay, and then take that little excess paste off at the corner. And you hear so many people saying, oh, my moulds don't work unless I, I need to put them in the freezer. But you can't, if you're doing something like this and you want lots of pieces of lace or lots of whatever you're doing, you can't keep putting them in the freezer to get the paste out, okay? You just need to adjust or use a different paste. So just bend the end back like that and it just peels away. Okay. So what I want to do, I want her to have a nice frilly dress. So I'm just going to gather up the edge a little bit like that. I'll turn it round now. Just have to start it off. 
Okay, and when you've done that, to help it hold, keep that top edge sort of straight there, and then you can just press it together to help it hold, okay? And then she's gonna have two layers of skirt. So I'm just gonna put that round some glue or water, you could use water. And always start at the front, okay? I'm putting it right down to her feet there. Okay, can you see that okay? And then here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so I love this colour with the brown with the brown bear. I think it looks really pretty. So again, just fold those edges to gather them. Oops. And then this press. is where the paste really shows how good it is. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I did put glue around the back, but I'm just going to put a little bit more there to put the skirt on at the back now. And what, what you can do, rather than, because you're going to view the teddy from the front, you really should, forgot about that, <laughs> leave those front ends loose and then tuck underneath because you won't see that from you know you, your the view you've got now you can see those joins but from the front you don't see them as obviously okay so i did mold these earlier before we started just so we can fit in in the 45 minutes i didn't want to uh, i'm sorry about the noise outside <laughs> someone in a car pulling up i think all right so some glue here again around the top And then we gather. I'm sorry, it's hard. I'm trying to do it so you can see it, but uh, sometimes the angle's awkward, isn't it? When you're demonstrating mm -hmm. something, trying to keep the view good for everyone. Okay, and then press again. Pop that on. I'll do the back first. That's a better idea, isn't it? <laughs> Someone asking what the glass bottle and brush are. Oh, right, that's the glue. That's the edible glue, okay, made with Tylo powder and water. All right, that's okay. And then the last piece. Okay. And press. I'll pop that on. I need a little more glue just under there to hold it. And I'm trying to avoid the stick. Do you remember what I said before about the satay stick? I don't want it to um, stay in because when, when she's dry, I forgot to say, put plenty of icing sugar underneath your figure as well. And that will, you know, prevent it sticking. Um, there you go. And I'm just going to actually press that lace onto her leg as well, help secure it, that bottom layer. Okay, so now we're ready to do her body. How now, far in advance can you make yeah. the frills? Um, well, I've just put them, like I've done the, the piece of knit for her dress, for the top of her dress as well. I've put them into the polythene bag. With our paste, it does keep quite well. Once you get Tyler or CMC in, into pastes, um, it will still dry quicker. In the bag, I would imagine you could do it a day or two before, a few days before maybe. And just make sure it's really sealed really well. And then if you can, put it into a Tupperware, you know, plastic box as well, a sealed plastic box. So now, her body is going to be covered, so I thought I'm not wasting my brown paste. I'll just make her body. And because you're covering it, you don't have to worry about removing all the creases and cracks and everything, you know. You don't have to get it perfectly smooth, so don't worry too much about that. Just the shape, you want the shape to be right. So we'll think, you imagine her having a waist. Teddies don't really have a waist, do they? But no, that would be her shoulders and for her head, okay? Let me just check the size of that. I think that might be, is it slightly small? I'm just gonna put it next, no. No, it's funny, you, you, it's, I think it is hard to judge what size to do when you're doing this because once it's covered it does look bigger okay so you saw before how to mold the knit so there's one here's another one i made earlier okay now this time i'm going to turn it over 
and I'm going to put some glue. I'm going to use that as the front. Some glue onto the body there. I'm just leaving a little edge. That's her waist here. Okay. Now down the back, we're going to have the paste meet in the middle there. So what I can do is fold it over. And then if I mark where I'm going to cut it, about there. And then do the same the other side. So if I turn that, I don't know why I turned it round, I could have done it. Just mark it there and cut. Then I'll put some glue very thinly onto the back. Take the two pieces over and they should meet there in the centre. Oh, what you can do as well, when you're doing this, you put it, if you're worried about pressing down or, you know, put it onto some sponge. That's a nice, neat finish, but you can still use your Dresden tool to sort of disguise the join. And the thing is, with, if it was a real knitted toy, you would see seams on it. So I always think that, don't worry too much. Now, under here, to get that to fit in, what you can do, is cut out little triangles of paste just to make it fit in so it fits in neatly okay so you need a few just cut a few out we'll see what that's like okay probably need one more I think there I haven't done that very evenly that will do so again just put your glue around and then push the ends in. Okay, you can do it on here, put it down on your sponge, press them in gently. You know, you know, you're not going to see all under here, are you? I'm just gonna put my finger in the top there to hold it. I'm not gonna hold on to the knitted paste. Just push that in. And that's ready to go nearly on top. Now just put some glue into the top there. Actually, you can put some a little bit of glue onto your blue paste as well, because what you're going to do now is like you did with the feet, just press those two sides together because that is now going to be trimmed off. Before you trim, you've got to really make sure that that edge, the paste meets together, that edge, because if it doesn't and you cut, you'll end up with a gap, you know, the hole. So take the scissors again and trim off. So there, you can just see the little seam. So I'm just letting it rest in my hand. I'm not gripping it because you don't want to spoil the pattern. Just push it together like this. Okay, and that's ready to go on the onto the body, straight onto the stick. Now, instead of just pressing it onto here, I don't know where the other piece of stick went that I, oh, there it is, that I cut off. What I would rather do is hold it in my hand here and make the hole by sort of twisting and pushing gently. Hope it's going to come out at the top <laughs> you can sort of tell it will okay so that now is easier to get onto that stick before i do i want the glue around here no glue on the stick no glue on the stick well done barry i was just waiting for you to do it <laughs> <laughs> oh you're trying to re you're reminding me oh, oh good i do forget things sometimes oh. okay so that's ready to go onto there and slide down onto this. She's slightly forward. Let's see. Now, it is a little bit too far forward. Let me see. I'm just going to try and push the stick a bit further forward. Let's see what that's like. That's a bit better now. But if you find you've got a gap at the back like I have, <laughs> A bow. We all want, you know, it's easy, isn't it, to put a bow on. So I'll see how the time is at the end and I will probably put a bow on there. So you can see how easy that is. It's just, it's the proportions, I think, isn't it? Um, now there, when I've pushed it on, it's disturbed. And you just see there the seam at the top. So like I said, never, ever use your fingers. Use the Dresden tool. Okay. To put that on. Right, I'm going to get, try and go a little bit faster now. We've got the two arms now. The great thing about this, the arms will rest sort of on a skirt. So like the legs, a long teardrop shape. 
And let's just see. I think that will be okay. And the same for the other one. Long teardrop shape. Then the brown paste into the mould. Corn flour. Knead it. And start to roll it. I want to get the two arms, so I know that should be plenty. We'll start to roll it out and pop it into there. Has anyone got any questions that we've missed or no? no? You okay? A few people want your paste dresser people, but we're not giving them those. <laughs> but we get it made, we don't we, we I wouldn't even know the quantities that were in it for everything. So there we go. Take that out. Okay. So you can either turn it over actually, put the arm on there, and that arm there, and get the cutting wheel again. And we just go into you sort of cut leaving a gap, you know that will roll across like this. Okay, you can fold that over and then mark here where you need to cut. And the same with this one, so let's do a cut at that angle, roll it across and you can see where to cut. I quite like that edge not to quite meet because it's underneath her, I just think it um, sits better, it gives like a, a flat edge to go against the body. Okay, so let's put some glue in there to start with. Okay, and then we'll wrap around that does meet more or less <laughs> <laughs> okay so we can trim off at the top there take the paste off there and then the bottom here the same as before you can cut little triangles out to make it fit neatly okay Like this, then some glue, fold those in and then take your Dresden tool and remember to hold it really loosely in your hands, make sure your hands aren't hot. When I was getting ready and I was saying, oh, it is a bit warm, it is a bit warm, I was cooling my hands off on the worktop, just put my hands flat. <laughs> Okay, to cool them off and that seemed to work quite well that's actually you see what I mean that is quite big that's maybe slightly bigger than I would like but for now I'm just going to go with it I'm not going to do it again um I would probably have done it again I think okay so same as same as before trim for the top and then take off little triangles at the bottom to fit around a little bit of glue, fold those in, again it's so tempting to press, it's really, <laughs> you, it's, you automatically go to press everything, this is your press, okay, don't worry too much about it, like I say, real knitted toys would have seams, oh dear, sorry about the noise again, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I've just squashed her arm. Bits. Oh no. Let's just rescue that arm. I think we can just about get away with that. I, I didn't realise it was there and went to squash the bits together and move them out of the way. So she's got a bit of a... Oh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Right, so we'll put some glue on the side of her body and onto her dress. Okay. And then the arms will just sit on there like this. Okay. So they are slightly big, but... <laughs> and you can, like there, I've just squashed her a little bit, haven't I, making that big mistake. I should have kept them way, away from the scraps of uh, paste. You could just mark it with your Dresden tool. Because when you, you sort of try this for the first time, you might find that you flatten it a little bit. So you can go over with the Dresden tool if you want to. Okay, so now 
going to put her head on. Okay. So next again. These are great, these little sticks as well when you put the arms on if you want need a bit more support. So we'll roll the bigger piece out now to wrap around the head. So tap that out. Thank you. Right, so I've just got the paste, roll out. Okay, I know that I've got to wrap around. This is, I've just made the head before I started. Okay, that's the size of the head. And you see, I've shaped it quite flat. Okay, if you do it too round, it's harder to fit the paste around it you're giving yourself more problems and because you're going to put the snout the little nose on it you don't notice it's fine someone's saying can yeah. you not roll the arm onto the mat again to get the impression well then i would if i do that to press it hard enough to get the impression no, then i would flatten. explain the question she may not have heard me what's that oh sorry <laughs> yeah there was a question about pressing this onto the mat which i probably could do to be honest a little bit but i don't know i don't want to get a double imprint that's too you know, it looks too messy. Um, I could get away with it because this is the back of the arm. No one would see it. So I, if I flatten that out, that would be okay. But I'm a bit worried. Should no. we just try no. it and see? No. <laughs> it's no. tempting, isn't it? Well, you wouldn't oh, do no. it, so don't no, do it. No, no. I would rather just make the arm again. I can't believe I did that. But, you know, when I used to teach the, the class, when I made mistakes, the class loved it and they'd all cheer. Yay, she did it wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all make mistakes, don't we? I think with the um, cake decorating, there's so many mistakes you can make, you know, especially as you're learning. Even when you've been doing it for how many, how many years? 32 years, like I have. I know I don't look old enough, but... <laughs> right, so this is for the head. I know that will wrap around it, okay? So I just press that in to start... Keep it gripped to the mat and then press roll in okay and just take that off right so now like before i want a nice straight edge if it's easier for you you can you can cut here on the other side so you can follow the pattern like that this is it that's if you're a perfectionist <laughs> excuse me so now i know i've got to i want that center really do the same as before just fold that over and mark where you're going to cut it trim up again and put it onto the sponge there and then some glue spread out very thinly fold the sides over don't press. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still going to do it. <laughs> Take the Dresden tool and press the edges together like this. Then you remember before we put the glue inside. I mean this you could you could do it and cut out all those little triangles again but I think for this we'll just put some glue onto the head underneath there. Press those together. And then the same this side. Do we have anyone in Australia distributes our pro molds? Um, I would have to find out the names. There might be a couple. It's just on the website, isn't it? Yeah, there should be um, a list of suppliers on the, our website as well. Which I'll give you the, the website address at the end. I think it's on the, on the title of the um, live as well. Right, so I've just turned it over and I've lost my scissors again to trim off. You could use this to make ravioli, couldn't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> you could do all sorts. I don't know whether the, it would keep the shape or not. So there we go. So that the, the pattern's flattened slightly here, but that does not matter because you're going to have the little snout there. So again, you just tidy up with your Dresden tool round the top there try and mark the pattern in you can do it much neater than me when you've got more time you know i'm just doing it very quickly to uh just seal that so that head is ready to go on now i wouldn't worry about doing under here but you can you know you can if you want to so her head is ready to go on oh 
glue just around here, not on the stick. Okay, and I'm just no. going to put that on. I'm not going to use the um, other one, which really I, I should do, but I'm just going to pop that on. Okay. Now she needs ears. So I'll just get a small piece of paste, come flour into the mould and roll the paste in. Actually I want to do enough to do the ears and the snout. I've probably got far too much, so I'll just start to roll that out a little and then pop it in here. If it feels tacky on the back, put corn flour on the back as well because it's really annoying if it sticks to your if it sticks to your non-stick rolling pin, it does happen. Uh, press really hard and roll. And there we are. So the ears and the snout. Oh, here we are. I've got two little circle cutters here. This one is for the snout. So we'll cut that one out. And this is for the ears. So we actually need four pieces for the ears. Three, four. Okay, now I'm going to glue two together. But when you do this, make sure the, the pattern is straight, okay? So if I think the lines are straight down here now, just so they match up front and back. Pop that one on. And then the same there, that's straight to me. Some glue. And the pattern straight. Then I want to just cut away a little semicircle so it fits nicely against their head. Okay, so we'll just take a little piece off there. And the same with that one, a little piece off there. And they're ready to attach to her head. And this one, the snout. Now, I'll probably use this actually to cover this little piece of trimming here. Let's see, it's probably about the right size actually. I'll just use a little bit more I think. So that can be attached to her face. 3.30 in New Zealand in the morning. Oh and gosh. And we're still watching. Oh. <laughs> so there's one of the little flower paste pieces there. I'm just going to use that as well a little bit of extra support but I'm not going to put any glue on it because that will soften it more we'll just put a little bit of glue onto it straight onto her face and it's at a slight angle as well and that can go on there and then this is going to fit around it now I will trim some little triangles out again just to help it fit so I'm not sure how many to do, I'll just see what happens. Okay, so we've got that sort of shape. And then thin glue onto the back of that. And over the snout. And then I'm just going to press it in with the Dresden tool. Turn it around a little. Yeah, I will now. It's just I can't see for it. Just push it in. Okay. So, like I say, it is an awkward. It is an awkward angle. Really need it to face me. Okay. So I'm going to make a little hole now for her eyes. In here. Using this small ball tool. I just need to turn her a second because I don't want her to be. Her head is slightly at an angle. You can probably see that. She is leaning slightly to the right. Or was that that's your left? But uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to put her ears on. I'm just checking they'll fit okay. So very thin glue. One ear. Oh, I forgot to say you can do that as well with your, your Dresden tool. You can push the edges together, okay, mark the pattern on. Then the second ear. Onto there. They're quite nice if you curve them a little bit as well, okay. 
And somewhere I have black paste. It's that small a piece of paste, I couldn't <laughs> see it. <laughs> I did it very, I coloured this, had to colour it myself. And when I opened the pot of black, there was hardly any in it. So I thought, oh, I can only do such a, a tiny piece of paste. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue into her eyes, onto her nose. Now her eyes, I just keep rolling balls of paste till I get to the same size. Joe dear is watching. Hiya Joe, that's my nephew Joe. <laughs> there we are, no, oh nearly. Ooh. I think this is the hardest part actually, getting two pieces the same size. And then I'll just take that over. Oh, oh dear. Let's see. Let's just get that out. Try again. Hooray. I think it was that one. I can't remember which one it was that was the same size. Okay. All said, these are different. Yeah. I'm using the other two for her nose, actually. I did put some glue on. So her nose can be an oval shape, a triangle, whatever you want. I'll just put a little triangle on there. Okay. And then just a few things now to finish her off. Okay, I'm just going to paint a little dot of white into each eye. So I've just got some water in this little tray. A little bit of white powder colour. And you see the difference that makes? Just putting that little touch, little touch of white in there. Okay. Oh, my mouth as well. We're going to be mm -hmm. a few minutes now. We're nearly finished. So I'm just going to make a little headband to put on her. I was just thinking then, there's something missing. What else is it besides her eyebrows and her mouth? So I've just pressed into the paste there very quickly. I just want to trim that. Which way shall I go with that one? That's better. In there, trim along. And off this side. Okay. It's not the neatest trim I've ever done. <laughs> But, and then some glue, it's probably not long enough either, so I'll just take it round the back so you won't see that it's not long enough. So in front of her ears, to round the back. And then she could have a little bow, I think I've got my, yeah, I'll just use the bow mould so it's quick. I was going to make a knitted bow, but I'm just going to do that little bow there. I think that size would be nice. This will just finish it off nicely. You could use little blossom flowers, you know, anything, whatever you've got. Okay. We had the crown from the swan. Oh, yes. Well, that'd mm -hmm. be nice, yeah, the little crown from the swan mold. Are all the other animals made and using the same technique? Yeah, basically. We need to now, have a look at the I cakes, put... don't we? Yeah, yeah. We'll just see if we've got time very quickly. I'm almost finished. I just need now to do... Where did I put the piping bag? Oh, there it is. To do her eyebrows. I've got a little bit of royal icing in here. Some black royal icing. And just make a little piping bag. Number one nozzle. And some black royal icing. When you use a very small nozzle like this, don't put much royal icing in your pipe in your bag. The smaller the hole, the less icing you put in the bag. Just rip the end off there. This is where I hope the nozzle isn't blocked or <laughs> something. Okay, so I'm going to just pipe. Can you see there? You mm. Okay, I'm going to try and just pipe. You can either just do a little line like I've done on that cake there, or you can do a mouth. I'll come back and do the mouth in a second. So she's got little eyebrows up here. She's 
quite a sad looking bear really, isn't she? Well, Shall I give her a mouth? Make a smile. Yeah, it's happier like that, isn't it? And then a little eyelash or two. Oops, from each eye. You're getting carried away now. I know. You have to just say stop. <laughs> Ooh, shaky hand day. I always think I need chocolate if I have shaky hands. So there she is anyway, that's the bear. And I would put another a little bow at the back, um, the big old bow there. So we're just about finished. I'm sorry that was very bit rushed at the end there. Um, the cakes, if you just so quickly show them the cakes to see all the other figures, but there's lots of photographs of these cakes on our website. You can have a look in the gallery. Um, everything we do has got, you know, all the different moulds, got different cakes to go with them. Um, and a lot of our cakes you could still make without the moulds because a lot of them are hand modelled. Um, so there's different ways. You know, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, David and Paul, for all the hard work you're putting in doing this. I think we all appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you all so much for watching. And I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye.